wherever you are, raise your hand. And say to God, I may not know what you are doing, but I am available for my generation. Raise up your two hands wherever you are. Let nothing distract you in this season and at this particular time. Raise your two hands. You have to demonstrate it. It's a demonstration of totality, total submission on behalf of your entire generation. For God is looking for one man. And I would rather be dead than be in a generation that God is still looking for a man. I would rather be a still bath than to be in a generation where God is still looking for a man. Raise up your two hands in total submission and surrender on behalf of your entire bloodline. God, say after me, God. You are not speaking. I've said to you, make sure you have a space. I type to, to you, make sure you have a speech. This meeting is generational. Raise up your two hands and make a clear declaration with your mouth. No, this is not the one that you say in your heart. No, man. This is the one where you will say, I believe, therefore I speak. So this is a meeting where your mouth we have some force of delivery. Why? Because in the spiritual order of things, words are spirit. Jesus said the word that I said to you, they are spirit and they are love. Words come from thoughts and intent and they have life of their own. Some covens of many, many years are still alive today by the spoken word of those who delivered their generation to the devil many years ago. Listen to me. Deliver your entire generation to God. Today, raise up your two hands wherever you are and shout to God. God, oh, I may not know what you are doing but I deliver my entire bloodline and generation to you today. What exactly is God doing? Why all this? What is God up to? What has he been up to from ages past? And why hasn't he fulfilled all that he's up to? <laughs> you may be the one asking that question today. I'm here to provide the answer to you. That known to God are his works from eternity. All of the works of God are already settled in heaven. Forever, O oh Lord, the word is settled. All of the things that God will do has been done. <laughs> Redemption took place before man began to live. The lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. 
We are living history forward. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying now? We are living history forward because uh, the lamb had been slain before the foundation of the world. It had to happen again. <laughs> Jesus had to now come to the earth to do what has been done. Oh, yeah. Say to yourself, my life has been done, has been done, it's been decided. Oh, Lord. One of the things that God promised me tonight is to let you know that there are no empty words here. Be careful. There are no empty words here. The church loves empty words. Words that will not move anything. The church loves to preach, but no little about God. Whatever you speak tonight, God is with you. Whatever. So be careful. Every word that you will speak must be propelled by the Holy Spirit. You are living history forward. Do you understand that now? Jesus had been slain before the foundation of the world, but he had to come to relive that moment all over again. This was the moment that Isaiah saw. Isaiah would be prophesying and he would say, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Truth is, it had happened before Isaiah saw it. Oh my God. The word of the Lord is yea and amen. Is done, is done, is done. That you are waiting for it right now does not nullify what I just said. It is done. <laughs> Ezekiel saw. Jeremiah saw, Isaiah saw, Daniel saw where the kingdom will be taken. Oh, the kingdom was taken before they were born. Oh, all they were seeing was to relieve the moment when John was on the highland of Patmos and he was seeing everything that David saw played out, that there was no one in heaven that could qualify to open the scroll. Oh, that scroll had been opened before the foundation of the world. Everything John saw on the highland of Patmos pertaining to Jesus, where the lamb was qualified to open the scroll, happened on the cross. So, History is being lived forward. With or without you, God has perfected and done everything that remains to be done. Now it needs to be relieved. Are you with me? It needs to be relieved. And so everyone here, you are here by divine destiny. This is a destiny meeting. And you are divinely implicated. And I do not care how long you have been waiting. Oh, you couldn't have waited longer than the children of Israel in Egypt. What was everything that God was all about? I need you to listen critically. Because this is one deliverance sermon that will be delivered to the entire children of God upon the face of the earth for full deliverance. Spiritual and body. From the beginning of life, God had perfected his work and he was looking for a man. And he's still looking for a man till now. All he did was to proclaim, proclaim redemption. And then he started looking for man from one generation to the other. For the glory of God shall be really revealed from one generation to the other. For a generation shall serve God and it will be counted unto another generation. So, God declared the redemption and for him to finish the declaration of that redemption, he preached the gospel. How many times did God preach in the Bible? How many times did God preach in the Bible? Only once. And all of the delivery of the gospel to the entire world was declared in Abraham. In you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. 
redemption had happened through Jesus Christ our Lord before the foundation of the earth, the gospel needed to be preached upon the face of the earth and the man that was used for that foundation was Abraham, the father of faith. That the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as, co as waters cover the sea. Listen, it is done. <laughs> Be careful what you see. It is done. God is just looking for a man to relieve the moment with him. All God found upon the face of the earth was a strategic partner in Abraham. Until now, God is still looking. Are you that man now? God is still looking for that one. God is still looking for that one that he will use. One man that he needed to use as the foundation and the commencement of his nationhood upon the face of the earth. That God will establish a nation out of the redemption that he has secured in his son. And Abraham came to the scene and he called him out of his entire generation. And he preached the sermon that the whole world, the whole earth, will be redeemed by in one man, Abraham. In you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. All, all, everyone. And the foundation started with one man. And with this man, there was a strategic partnership between heaven and the earth. Shall can two work together, except they be agreed. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. All God was saying with those two scriptures was not for two people or three people to gather upon the face of the earth. No, God is looking for man to gather and partner with God. That's all. The greatest strategic partnership that can ever happen in life is between God and man across every generation. And Abraham ticked the box for God. And then God began to establish how generations will come out of him. And God began to extend his hand inside of Abraham to you and I and to generations in future. And he started saying, no, certainly by your descendants. Oh, I thought it was only about Abraham. No, sir. It was about the eternal purpose of God upon the face of the earth. What is God doing and why is he doing it? That the whole earth shall be covered. With the glory or the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as what has covered the sea. That the kingdom of the earth has become the kingdom of God and of his Christ and it shall reign forever and ever. One prophet saw it and he said it shall become. Daniel said the kingdom shall be given. When John saw it on the island of Patmos, he said the kingdom was given. Hallelujah. Say to yourself, my life is done. Settled in the eternal purpose of God. All that is required of you and I now is for Exodus to commence. All that we come to say is a declaration. My partnership with God upon the face of the earth is to declare his word upon the face of the earth. For when God sees a man to declare his purpose upon the face of the earth, his institution will be established. And listen to me, nothing can stop it. Nothing, no machination, no plan of the enemy, nothing can stop it. Because it is done. It is settled. At this point, what was very clear it was that God has found a man that he can tabernacle with and, and use upon the face of the earth. And he found Adam. His plan was to partner. He didn't stop anything. When the fall happened, he found another man, Enoch. 
He prepared a platform for a pathway where man can walk with God. Can you see that? A partnership, a strategic partnership. And after that, he found another man, Noah. Uh, uh, he found a man that can clear the earth, clear the earth of the, of the rubles of, of, of violence and corruption and wickedness. And then uh, after Noah, he found a man, Abraham. At that point, the rubbles had been cleared to an extent, and all God needed to do was to find a man that could say, here, am I, there, here I am. And from then, he began to establish a nation, a nation that he will bring into a type and shadow of how his own righteous nation will be upon the face of the earth. And he met with Abraham on that day and said to him, Know certainly that your descendants will be taken into captivity. And I will deal with that particular nation that will deal with them. And after that, I will deliver them. And I will deliver them and they shall come out with great possession. But as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace and you shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here, 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 here. God said two things here. Know certainly that your descendant shall be strangers in a land that is not theirs and then i will bring them back here at that point where abraham was god had found a place where he will provide for his own nation where abraham was god had found that place but his descendant will be strangers in a land why Question, who brought the children of Israel into captivity? Was it devil? Was it Egypt? Or was it Israel? Someone help me there. Who? God promised Abraham already where Abraham was lying down. That place where Abraham was, God had said, your descendant will come back here. Don't forget, God saw this man in his own redemptive plan. The work had been done. The redemption work had been sealed before the foundation of the world. God now had to find men across successive generation to be strategic partner with him upon the face of the earth to establish the work that he had finished. Are you, are you, are you with me now? So the work, the, the, the partnership and the deliverance that God is giving to you and I is a sealed partnership and a sealed deliverance. Nothing can change it. Listen to me. So, who brought them into captivity. And why do they need to be strangers in a land? Someone said, God designed it. The devil and Egypt work to execute his work. Any other person? Who brought the children of Israel into captivity and why? What was promised to them was the land where Abraham was. Why did they need to go to a strange land. Why? Someone said famine. What we saw was there was famine and, do, and uh, uh, Jacob had to then tell his brothers to go. But let me let you know today 
that it was the brothers of Joseph, it was the brothers of Joseph and the sons of Israel that brought Israel into captivity. Someone write that for everybody to read. It was the brothers of Joseph. Have you read Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17 before? And have you read Matthew chapter 10, verse 36 before? That a, a friend loves at all times and a brother is made for adversity. Whether you like to know it or not, there is no evil that can come upon a man without the cooperation of his own inner caucus, without the cooperation of his own family. If the devil will not find a hold in a family to stand, no captivity can happen there. Jesus said, I was with you in the tabernacle. I was with you everywhere. We did not lay hands on me. Who did they use to bring Jesus down at the point where the execution of the redemptive plan of God will commence? He was one of his disciples. If that one man would not be found in the inner caucus, Jesus would not be brought down. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Jesus said it in Matthew chapter 10, verse 36 as a clue. And a man's enemy shall be they of his own household. Who brought Israel into captivity? Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem, and Israel called Joseph. <laughs> Israel called Joseph. Abraham had been told that no certainly that your descendant. And this is Israel now, calling Joseph. And not your brothers. What did you write there? Did you write enemy? Did you write devil? Did you write friend? Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. So he said to him, I'm reading Genesis chapter 37 from verse 12. So he said to him, come, and I will send you to them. So he said to him, Joseph said to I, I, Israel, here I am. Is that your answer? Is that your answer? Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see if it is well with your brothers. All Israel sent Joseph to do was to, was to look after the welfare of his brothers. But Joseph ended up in the well. Check out if, they are well, if he's well with them. But they brought him into the well. And check out if he's well with the flock. And bring back word to me. That was it. That was the brief. And the man that was when, that was made to go and check the welfare of his brothers started wandering in the desert. Till the man came and said, They are in Dotan. And as he appeared to them, they said to themselves, Here is the dreamer. These were brothers. And then they gathered together and finally decided among themselves what they would do with him. By verse 27, they said, come, let us sell him to Ishmaelite and let not our hands be upon him. For he's our brother and our flesh and his brothers listened. Then Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to Ishmaelite for 20 shekels of silver and they took Joseph to Egypt. Excuse me, how did Joseph enter into Egypt as a slave or as a free man? Please answer me. Slave, who enslaved Joseph? Answer me. His brothers. Exodus 
And why did this happen? From the fall, you began to see the foundation of iniquity in brotherhood. That the first death and the first um, blood that was shed was from a brother to another brother. Even Israel that become, even Jacob that became Israel, what was exactly the overarching effect of this upon his life? You would find this in his mother teaching him how to udwink his brother to take the birthright. Brothers. Brothers. Did you find the devil in between Cain and Abel's story? Please answer me. Did you find the devil? No. He was brother. Rising up against another brother. The same thing we find in Esau and Jacob. Brother against brother. Now we found 11 brothers or 10 brothers against one. The other one was at home with their father. Now why will Israel be enslaved? Or you didn't know that immediately Joseph was sold to slave, the whole of Israel entered into slavery. Are you aware? That by one man sin came to the world, by one man redemption and righteousness also came, is the order and the pattern of the spirit. It doesn't have to happen with you. It doesn't have to start with you. But there has been a transaction of iniquity in every bloodline and in every family. And God will find a man that will reverse that. Are you that man? That is the question today. Who shall I send to bring deliverance to your entire family and your generation? So that that generation that has been sold into darkness will now become the generation that will be delivered by the light of the redemption of God. Are you that man? If God is looking for a man in a generation, let me never be in that generation. Because if I am in that generation, I will be that man. I would never be there. than be alive in a generation when God is looking for a man and I'm not available. My destiny is to be the strategic partner upon the face of the earth with God that will deliver the whole earth by my bloodline to God. One by one, the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as waters covers the sea, whether the devil likes it or not. It is a finished work, my brothers. It's a finished work, my sister. And you will find that in the church today, much of what the church, the brothers are doing to against the brothers is greater than what the devil is doing to us. Why will Israel be enslaved? This was a mark of iniquity. This was a sign of iniquity and a sign of the fall. God was ready. Immediately, Joseph said, here I am. God made up his mind to use a man. <laughs> that no matter the vehicle that took him into slavery, he will use the man. Excuse me. Egypt is different from Canaan. It was the scene of the Amorite that was not yet full. But why, sir? So that while the scene of Amorite is being measured across generations, um, uh, Israel will have gone to Egypt Listen to me and listen very well. And Egypt at the time, signifying the highest civilization of man. Okay? Egypt at the time would now become a platform for God to use Israel to establish wealth and affluence and greatness like never seen before as a way to plant the greatness that the generation of Moses will harvest. Did you hear that? Did you just hear what I said? The scene of Amorite was being measured. Pending when that scene is full, 
Israel had to be sent to the largest economy in the world. And by righteousness and excellence, Israel had to contribute to that economy, to take that economy to the greatest level of greatness ever recorded. Just so that generations of Moses can come to harvest that greatness at its climax. I put it to you that immediately after Exodus happened, Egypt never became world power again. By that Exodus, the largest economy was completely ripped apart. No, sir. All God did was to send Israel to harvest what God used Israel to establish. That was why he said to them, don't beg. Go and take. Before, because before you got here, oh, I have sent him. I tie me in a I say to you today, the thing that you are suffering from, they are orchestrated to establish a dimension of greatness and planting of seed ahead of generations to come. So that when your sons and daughters stand upon the face of the earth, across all the earth, all that they will harvest will be the greatness that you have established and God has established through you. Let your heart be strong. Do not be afraid of the thing that you find. Whether you are a slave today or you are enslaved yesterday, it doesn't matter. Yesterday ended last night because all that needed to be done was Joseph to enter into Egypt. Oh, for the Lord was with Joseph. I mean, uh, are you ready for this night? The Lord was with Joseph. <laughs> and all that needed to be seen was excellent delivery across the, the dimension that Joseph was establishing in Egypt as a slave. Oh my God. And for God to make that happen, he made sure that Pharaoh at its climax could see a vision in a dream that he couldn't decipher. And at that point, he also orchestrated that all the wise men's eyes will be blind, that all the, all the machinators and all the uh, astrologers and all the necromancers and all the magicians in the days of the largest civilization and the largest economy in the world will be shut down that they don't, they won't know the meaning of the dream. That Pharaoh had. Listen to me, friends. Righteousness and favor is not fair. Oh, this was not a level playing ground. This was not a level playing ground. Oh, child of God, all you need to do is to answer the call today. Here I am. God had made everything ready. And with boldness and good courage, you go because he has shut and he will continue to shut down the eyes of the magicians of this generation so that the platform will be clear and he would have planted you in a place whereby it's only Joseph that can interpret that vision. And Joseph was brought before Pharaoh. And after the delivery, Pharaoh said, of course, there is nobody that will find in him the spirit of the gods. Pharaoh didn't know the Lord. Potiphar didn't know the Lord. Potiphar's wife didn't know the Lord. What they saw was excellence. And they were able to see this excellent delivery. But what they didn't know was that this Joseph was planting a seed of greatness into that economy that would make that economy to be mighty. Question at the point that Israel and the brothers of Joseph met him and came into Egypt, where this lives. Were this lives? No, they were not. Because Joseph couldn't have been installed as a prime minister of Egypt. while being a slave. So there was a naturalization that happened there. Listen to me and listen clearly. <laughs> 
were citizens of heaven upon the face of the earth. And our naturalization might have been on the earth, but there is a corporate esp espionage here. Oh, my God. There is an espionage here. We have been sent ahead of time to take over the earth as a natural citizen of the earth, but no, as a great citizen of heaven, sent to the earth as an espionage. Are you following now? Are you understanding? I don't want anything to run above your head. At that point, Joseph was a man of two citizens. Two citizenship. Of Israel and of Egypt. <laughs> Again, there was a foundation because a man would later come that will establish this as well. Moses. So Joseph had to be naturalized to become an Egyptian just so he can become a prime minister. Oh, didn't they know that he was an Hebrew? No, they knew. At some point when Joseph's brothers joined him, they knew. They knew that he was because he presented himself and his family to Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh, who they were and where they came from. And Pharaoh was aware of it. At this point, there is no way you can uh, establish the largest economy in the world that you won't, uh, you won't open your doors to immigrants. What Pharaoh and Egypt didn't know was that at the time, they established a place called Goshen for the children of Israel. It was now time for the takeover to begin. Remember 80, 20 Pareto principle? It was Joseph that founded it. And Joseph used that principle to establish decorum in the largest economy in the world and to amass affluence and influence on, on, on the earth for the sake of Pharaoh and Egyptians. And in that season and in that time, the economy of Egypt ran faster than the economy of any world. And when God brought the famine that will make Joseph to now try up and to make Joseph to become father to Pharaoh, God didn't stop. He didn't wink. He brought it full fledged and Joseph gained full dominion completely and the glory of God became the glory of Joseph. He said to his brothers, go tell my father of all my glory in Egypt because it is the desire of God to share his glory with you. He said he will not share his glory with any graven image but of you. Jesus said in John chapter 17, the glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, that there might be one church as well. Hey, are you ready? So, as Joseph brought in his brothers, everyone was measuring the iniquity of Amorite. Hey, are you with me here now? Hey, are you with me here now? Oh, oh. everyone was measuring. Do, do you know that uh, the entire trip the entire journey that the children of Israel made from Egypt to Israel and um, to Canaan, Joseph also made it. Do you know that? Do you know that? I want somebody to answer me. Did you know? <laughs> When do you think that happened? Okay, I will tell you. Somebody said he doesn't know. When Jacob died, Jacob told Joseph, don't bury me here. Hey. <laughs> ah, You see, the Canaan land had become a land for God before the children of Israel got there. When God told Abraham that this land I have given to your descendant, all Abraham did was to be that one man that will buy a little portion of that land. And all he did was to perfect his deed. He fully perfected the deed and paid in full the land. And he, he was buried in that land 
one. Sarah was buried in that land, two. Isaac was buried in that land, three. Rebecca was buried in that land, four. Jacob was also buried in that land. When you look at your Bible, Joseph was the first person to leave the little ones and the flock behind. That thing that Pharaoh told Moses that you can go, uh, leave your children. It was Joseph that did it. I, uh, can you imagine? By intelligence report, it came to that Pharaoh that existed in the days of Moses that somebody made that trip before. Joseph made that trip. It was a few days that Joseph went, buried his father. Where did he go? He left Egypt and went to Canaan, buried his father in Machpelah and came back there. It was inevitable for the land of promise to be the promised land because about five to six patriarchs had been buried there before then. Why were they buried? They now became the barometer of measure. Oh, God was using the Petras to measure the sin of Amorites. Because the time will come where the sin will be so full. And then Exodus will be inevitable. There are triggers today. There are triggers around us today. Pay critical attention. There are triggers around us. There are triggers around us today. There was a trigger. That was a trigger for the children of Israel to know. But they didn't get it. Now, follow me carefully. Joseph died. And when Joseph died, the devil now started gathering intelligence in the spirit. No certainly today that everybody is working for God. Including the devil as a servant of God. That is why you and I need to advance to the place of friendship so that we can love at all times. For a brother is born for adversity and a man's enemy shall be they of his own household. Jesus said, no more do I call you servant, but now I call you friend so that you can lay your own life too ah, by saying to God, I am here, send me. The devil started gathering intelligence as a quality control manager that he has always been from Eden. God created man in Genesis chapter 1, formed man in Genesis chapter 2, now started the making of the man in Genesis chapter 3, but when you make a product, you will need uh, a sounding board. You will need to critique that product. And so who was the entity that will be set up and so God set the devil up and iniquity was found in him and he became the quality assurance manager to test or to tempt rather for God doesn't tempt, God tests. So for a report to be found in the spirit for promotion of a child of God, there has to be a detailed documentation of two dimensions. Number one, a detailed documentation by test and a detailed documentation by temptation. God and his cohort will do the one of test, the devil and his cohort will do the one of temptation. That's why you count it all joy, brethren. When you fall into diverse temptation because at that point a promotion is coming here do you understand what i'm saying now that's why you don't need to pray against all of these things oh just ask for the fortitude to bear and to go through your test and your temptation because it shall come it is a mark of promotion at that point that the devil came and started measuring man in the garden it was time for the making of the man god was not surprised he was just sorry and those were the words of Moses. He wasn't, the, the Moses just captured everything just as it was shown to him in the glory that he found. God cannot be sorry for anything. You understand what I'm saying? He had been known, he had known already that this thing will happen, man will go, and all of the things that he created in the Garden of Eden was not for their consumption in Eden. All the trees, all the things that was, was created, tree that was good for food, tree that was, uh, uh, tree of uh, uh, the knowledge of good and of evil, um, and tree of life. All of these trees were for man's consumption. The only tree that was not for man's consumption was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's, that tree was the tithe of the old garden. That tree was not seen. That tree was the tithe of the whole garden. Listen critically. Because with God, it was not seen. It was there. God created it. Do you understand what I'm saying now? 
<laughs> in God, but, but with us, disobedient, battered sin. Do you understand what I'm saying now? And that tree, when you touch what you are not supposed to touch, it will burst what you have never seen. And immediately that happened, God got all the tools and all the documentation he needed. Because now he has known that the entity that he created does not have the capacity to obey. There was nothing in that man that showed that he could obey God. There was absolutely nothing. He all along he has been dishing out instruction. He will name animals. He will tend the, the, the garden. He will do everything. Till that time, we were we didn't know that this entity that God had created and formed does not have anything inside of him to obey God. And God had then said, it is not good for man to be alone. He was not talking about marriage. He was saying, it is not good for man to be in this condition of not having full reliance and dependence on God, on me, God. That's what he meant there. And that's why he brought woman out of man as a type and shadow of the church coming out of Christ to a point that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Needed to establish that this product that I made does not have the capacity to obey me. That was all the test was meant to do. And so the devil came again to gather intelligence report. Are you with me? Is this, too, is, this, is this getting too much for you? Is this getting too much for you to comprehend? I can take question if you want any, if you, if you don't understand. But you have to be delivered. Your generation must stand to become gods in this era. And God will find your generation as a platform to claim and to see as a strategic partner upon the face of the earth. Therefore, you need to understand, you need to be very, very, very calm to listen in and understand. Because when declaration starts tonight, you will find your entire generation, your bloodline being totally reclaimed from darkness into the light of God. So the enemy started gathering intelligence reports and they gathered that, oh, um, these people, they will multiply and they will become greater than us. They didn't get it. <laughs> and so they started bringing measures by which they will depopulate the light of God upon the face of the earth. The same way darkness is doing everything to depopulate and discredit the church and the body of Christ and to attack. Christ and God, why do the Edens rage? I, why do the kings, pro, pro, eh, the kings of the earth, they gather against the Lord and his anointed? Do you see that? So they gathered. And part of the measure of depopulating was to have a panoramic view of taking the life of the seeds. Pay attention now. Of the seeds, of the future seeds of Israel. Definitely the enemy has gathered some intelligence report. I tell you. The enemy has gathered some intelligence report up to that time that we must not allow generational seed to be birthed and uh, he spotted the male. He spotted male man. This is not gender thing here. He spotted male man for a reason, to put out the light of Israel. And so they started bringing in a plan by which they can bring down population of the children of Israel at the time. At that time, a cry went to heaven. What brought God down to answer the cry of the children of Israel at the time. Was it their prayer or the iniquity of Amorite was being was full? Which one? Please help me here. What made God to come down at that time? Are you aware that by the time Moses was born, it was already 350 years gone. Imagine what will happen in the first generation, like 100 years gone, and prophecy 
was being told that we, Exodus is going to happen. Exodus is going to happen. Exodus will happen. Then by the 200th year, Exodus is still going to happen. Excuse me. If you and I were in that generation, will we believe God? Will we believe that Exodus will still happen? Yes or no? There is no way. Do you know that there are seven generations between Abraham and Moses? At the time that they got to Egypt, you count Levi. From Levi, you will begin to see that there were, you see, Kohatat. Kohatat now became the grandfather of Korah. Korah and Moses were cousins. And then you find Amram. And then you find Aaron and Moses. Four generations. When you count from Levi, Aaron and Moses were the fourth generation. Confirming what the Lord has told Abraham. Are you seeing redemption? Are you seeing the work of redemption going on? That God will always find a man in a generation. Are you with me now? At that point, it was not the prayer of the children of Israel. It was that the sin of Amorite was being full. Now check out. At the time that Moses was born, at that time, uh, was Canaan uninhabited? Or were people there? At that time, all these years, 300 and something years that the children of Israel were already in Egypt. People were there. What were they doing? What were they doing? They were tilling the ground for the children of Israel to come. They were tilling the ground. They were using all the sophistication. Don't be afraid. When you see the world, they are preparing the heart for us. And that's why God needs you and I to be bold. God needs you and I to come out and say we are here. All die and die. We are here and we are ready to be bold and be of good courage and to take what has been given to us. When he spoke through Moses to the children of Israel that go and possess, did they not fight? Excuse me, this is the time to fight the good fight. Oh, there is a good fight and there is a bad fight. A good fight is the one pertaining to faith. A good fight is the one that pertains to laying hold of eternal life. A good fight is the one that is pertaining to laying hold of eternal life across generations. A bad fight is the one of self-aggrandizement. Using Jesus and using God every day to get all that you can, can all you get and sit on the can. No, that is not what this is about. This is a global agenda for God to take over every city and for God to take over everywhere upon the face of the earth. That the earth will become God's, whether the devil likes it or not. There is nothing the devil can do. So you can see simultaneous operation going on. You can see what God was doing as they were, as the children of Israel were there in Egypt. All that the devil did through Pharaoh was to re was to reestablish what the brothers of Joseph had done. You see, nobody can take us into captivity if we have not taken ourselves into captivity at first. Are you with me? The devil could not have killed Jesus if God had not delivered him up. It's not possible. The devil, the Pharaoh and uh, 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 Pontius Pilate and, and Herod and all that were looking for him, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of them, come to think of it. Every one of them were supposed to be on the side of God with the exception of government. 
Pharisees, Sadducees, elders, Sahendrins, are they not custodians of uh, the religion of uh, that pertains to God? But a brother will always sell a brother. <laughs> Make no mistake about it, a brother will always sell a brother. This is the product of the four. The design of God was for is for us to be a friend, not brother. Just the same way God didn't design us to live by miracle. If you are consistently living on miracle, you are in crisis. God established blessing for his children. <laughs> there he established blessing life forevermore God established blessing for his children in blessing I will bless you hey God established blessing in Abraham established blessing in Isaac established blessing in Jacob miracle is a sign of crisis when you see someone says I need a miracle it means there is a crisis on ground <laughs> we you and I are not meant to leave in miracle, miracles are for children. We are meant to establish our feet in blessings of Abraham by the help of God Almighty. So living by miracle is good, but step up, please. Because what is established for you and I is blessing. So at that point, all Pharaoh did was to re-establish what has been done in the spirit. What the brothers of Joseph had done. They had put him into slavery and he was free because he became prime minister only for Joseph to die. And then uh, freedom ended and servitude came again because the devil had gathered in tell in the spirit. And God was also ready to stage up Pharisee, to stage up, to stage up the heart of Pharaoh, rather, to use Pharaoh very well, to harden him so that the work that God needed to do in perfection by harvest, he can do it. And so he came by mighty hand. He came by miracles. Do you see that? He came by miracle. He was showing miracle to them. Miracle is not for us. Miracle is for, is for others. It's for strangers. Miracle is for babies in Christ. Miracle is for children. Blessings are for us. Are you with me now? I'm, I'm not heretic. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Establish that. And while all these things were going on, the land of Canaan was being tilled. It had become very sophisticated that one of the inhabitants was Jericho. And they were so sophisticated that even on the wall of the, of the city, people were living there. Can you imagine that? If the, those properties had been given to the children of Israel at the time that they were in Egypt, Oh, the cultivation would do that be proper, properly done. Do you understand what I'm saying? And at this point, Egypt had now become very, very great world power. And the harvest was ready. The land of Egypt was groaning. Because all the resources that all the children of Israel would collect as harvest was now ripe. But, who shall I say? The earth is groaning, brethren. Don't complain about the destruction that you see on earth until you are ready. When you and I are ready and you can stand before God and say, here yeah, we are, send us. Take us to the highest height of influence and affluence. And we will get there and deliver those gold for you. And we'll use those gold and silver to worship you at your feet. And we'll use it for self-aggrandizement. We are ready. We are ready. What is the cry today? Give us. But are we ready? Are we ready? If God delivered to you the wealth of Elon Musk today, what will you do with it? Answer me. There are some poverty induced righteousness that as a result of our inability to fund our proclivities, we believe that we are righteous. 
I ask you today, if $236 billion is committed into your hand today, what will you do? Are you delivered from yourself to the point that you can deliver the earth into the hands of God? And all the gold and all the resources that are in the hands of God, in your hand that God will deliver to you, you will put at his feet as his mark of worship. Because that's what God wants. That is when the glories of the earth and the kingdoms of the earth will become that of God and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. All God wants is not for your personal aggrandizement, for God to restore you and your bloodline and to give, to give you great deliverance uh, so that you can perfect your proclivities. Are you fully delivered from yourself? He was looking for a man that is fully delivered from himself. At that point, Moses had used first 40 years of his life to bear an Egyptian, an Israelite that was naturalized, sent and funded, sponsored on the bill of the man that wanted the seed of Israel dead. God so made it happen that the people he had killed, their children, he ended up funding one of their children to be his, his, his child and to send him to school and to raise him to be a man that was mighty in words and in deed. When you, when you go to the book of Acts chapter 7 and you look at the executive summary that Stephen, that was full of the Spirit of God, downloaded from heaven and he gave us the master, the master, the master design and the master documentation of heaven concerning what happened from, Gen from, from Acts chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 51. You will see everything thing that I've said from the strategic or the executive summary of heaven. At least Stephen was not there and he was, he was not learned because he was part of those that were with Jesus. The, 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 the men took notes. They took note that these ones are untrained and they've been with Jesus. So there was no way Stephen would have had access to this information. It was by the Spirit of God because it was full of the Spirit. He downloaded into heaven. He entered into heaven, act into heaven's uh, hardware by the Spirit of God to download exactly summary that was given. And at this point, he had got into a place of being an army general. Killed a lot of people for Egypt. Up until this time, the children of Israel had forgotten about the promise of God through Abraham. Because hope deferred makes their hearts grow weary. You are there. You have lost hope. I am calling you home today. You have said, can God deliver you? This is the third generation. This is the fourth generation. You are counting. Things are not done. Oh, you are not alone. The children of Israel counted up to 100. They counted 200. They went 300. They added 50 to it. Nothing. But I tell you the truth. I do not care how long you have been there. I don't care how long you are there. I don't care how long that bloodline has suffered. I don't care how long the devil had ruled and poverty and obscurity had been your lot. I don't care how long you are wandering without knowing the reason why you are born. Yesterday ended last night. I have come to announce for you that Exodus has begun in your life and in your generation and in your entire family and if you decide to be like Moses today to say here I am send me the entire family will witness that exodus in your lifetime in the name of Jesus. This was what happened to Israel. This was what happened at that point Moses was born. At the point when Moses was born, 
he entered into that dimension of God's blessings and he started reaping everything that God established. He started reaping everything one by one by one by one. And then he got to a point where as an army general, he had killed, he had killed a lot of people. He had killed a lot of people for Egypt. But the time came, according to the exact summary we, 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 we are given in Acts chapter 7, it came into his heart. What was that it? Someone should highlight that Bible verse in the book of Acts, chapter 7. It came into his heart. It came into it. That was the force of destiny. That was the force of the call of God. That was the force of Exodus. Came into his heart. And that word started whispering, you are not an Egyptian. 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 And then he started getting intelligence. He started getting intelligence. He started growing cold. Is there not more to my life as an animal? general is this all is this all i will fulfill is this all i will achieve there is is there no is there no more in god you are there and with all your achievement you are saying is there no more to god is there no more to god why all this why all this why am i serving god why do i have everything i have today why 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 moses was at that point it came into his heart God bless you, man. And when he was 40 years old, of course, someone at 40, you must have recorded something for yourself. He had eloquence. He was mighty. That guy that was a stammerer, he was not stammerer. It was the encounter with God that changed his, he changed his DNA for life. Which means if, an, if a child gets to a place of fear, he sees something that is greater than him, he, he, he will be afraid. He will start stuttering. He will start stammering. He saw I am that I am that day. And he saw and he saw things that he could not, to a point where he was now overwhelmed. He said, can you send someone else? Because I don't think I can go. I, I, I have never seen this kind of thing in my entire life. And when he stood before Pharaoh, Pharaoh says, who is that God? It wasn't that that man was arrogant. They don't know the Lord. Don't forget when, when, when Joseph got there, they didn't know the Lord. All they found in Joseph was excellent. The Lord was with Joseph. Potiphar didn't see the Lord. He saw excellence. The Lord was with Joseph. Potiphar's wife didn't see the Lord. He saw excellence and favor. The Lord was with Joseph. Pharaoh didn't see the Lord. He saw excellent spirit in whom is the spirit of the gods. That's what they call it. He didn't say the spirit of God. Spirit of the gods. Now it came to pass when he was 40 years old. It came into his heart to visit his brethren. Are you seeing, are you seeing that? To visit what? His brethren. Though captivity came into the life of Israel through a brother. Deliverance is coming into Israel through a brethren. Are you seeing me now? Are you hearing? To a brother. The same tool. The same tool that was being used. And at 40, at least you have done something for yourself. Moses was well within his right to say, well, uh, let me, just let me consolidate on my personal successes in Egypt. At least I have gotten uh, uh, citizenship of uh, US, citizenship of Canada, citizenship of this and that. I've settled my family. Uh, let me now begin to even let me even settle down and marry self. Do you understand? Because at this point he was not married yet. He was preoccupied with making name for himself and uh, settling down and all of those things and, and supporting the 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 country that he is a second citizen to. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then the force of destiny visited him. And as the force of destiny visited him in the in the clearest language of 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 what he could convey, do you understand? Uh, he, he, he decided for once that I've been killing for this nation Israel, let them Egypt rather. I've been killing for this nation Egypt. Let me now kill Egypt for the nation I truly belong to. Are you with me now? And when he did that, the news went everywhere. And Moses had to chapa. 
he jackpot completely and left for 40 years. Excuse me, if you are Moses, you would have forgotten completely the reason why you came to the reason why it came into your heart at 40. Question What business was Moses doing in Midian? What business was he doing in media? Someone want to help me? What business? He was a shepherd. Was he his own business he was tending? Was it his own business? A once general. A one-time mighty man in word and in deed had now been relegated to the position of handling his father-in-law's business, Jethro. Ridiculed. I'm sure someone would have come and said, ah, um, Papa Jethro, this is your in-law. I hear in Egypt, in Egypt, he's a mighty man who He's a great man in Egypt. Ah, it's great. It's the greatness we are going to shop. Heads were bowed at this point. The one time flicker of hope that the Israelites would even hear of and say, ah, maybe finally we are coming close to the point. I'd now left and ran away. Question. Who made Moses to run? Pharaoh, Israel, or both? He was both. He felt Israel will accept him. They denied him. He felt by Israel accepting him, he will be able to marshal them together, knowing a lot about the defense architecture of Egypt. He will be able to cause a downfall. That was his own uh, plan. But Pharaoh was already looking for him. So he could not fit in anywhere. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you that type that, could, that cannot fit into any church right now? Uh, the, the, the church is pushing you out. The devil is looking for you. Are you with me now? <laughs> Are you with me now? Are you with me now? Is this, uh, is this sinking somewhere? Is he adding up? Uh, who is that kind of person here? You are a witness. Just raise up your hand. Nobody, you, nobody can understand you in your church. The church is uh, denying you on one hand, and the devil is also looking at you and uh, looking for you on the other hand. <laughs> or just raise up your hand and say, "Here I am. Send me, Lord." Those are the people God is looking for. Forty years, he jumped to Midian. And was relegated to just cleaning the house for Papa, running errand. I mean, if you have run errand for 40 years, you should, I mean, by then you should know at 80, excuse me, let's be factual. Will any deliverance come through you at 80? Even if they say it will happen, would you believe it? I tell you the truth, it doesn't matter how old you are right now. I don't care how old you are and it seems that it is lost, it is gone. Listen to me. As long as you are in God's eternal purpose and you can stand up this night to say, here I am, send me, everything about you is done already. It's already determined before you are born. And no matter how old you are, no matter how much time has gone, listen to me. Exodus will happen at 80. Oh my God. Exodus will happen at 80. 
I don't care how long Nigeria is the way it is. Exodus is coming. I don't care how the world is. And the sons of God, they are breathing down on our neck. And we do not have any representation where it matters in the world. Exodus is here. Are you the one that God will send? Say amen. I say give yourself space. Uh, it's getting hot now. We are getting to the place of declaration now. I can't wait to get to that point where you will stand and make a declaration for your entire generation. Where God will find you as that one that will begin to build upon your generation. A year to come, none of your generation will come upon the face of the earth and will not serve God. Not one. Not one. By then, it will be too late for the devil to reclaim everywhere. He will just see that, ah, hey, the plant had been, the seed had been planted before the takeover. I tell you, Antichrist will find it difficult to take over this earth because of you and I. Listen to me. Uh, rapture will not happen. Hey, uh, Antichrist will come before rapture. Listen to me. Listen, this is what the church is getting wrong. Uh, listen very well. So that when it begins, uh, the mark of Christ that is upon us already will distinguish us. And we will now be the one that will take over from the entire rubbles of the earth. So that the righteous will inherit the earth forever. I've been asking this question for a long time and nobody has ever answered me in the church. I've gone to theologians to show me where elevation comes before persecution. I've told them to show me where celebration comes before exam. Even Jesus, our Lord, had to go to the cross before he was resurrected and before he was exalted and given a name that is above every name. Daniel had to go through tests before he became 10 times wiser than his brethren. And he had to go, the three Hebrew had to go into the furnace of fire before the fourth man showed up. Daniel had to go into the mouth of the lion's den before elevation came. So please show me where rapture will happen before Antichrist. Persecution had to come for the Israelites in Egypt. And God brought a dynamic blessing such that Goshen happened. Goshen happened, but Egypt happened before Goshen. Do you understand what I'm saying? And deliverance came in Goshen. That there was light in Goshen even when there was darkness everywhere. The reason God will bring back the gifts of healing and all of the functional dimension of the gift of the, of the spirit is in those days when they would shut their hospitals, when they would shut everything, they did a little with vaccination. You saw it. In those days, we will be raising the dead. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Angels will now come to give us food by the time they close their bank account. Do you understand? Because I cannot carry the mark of Christ and carry the mark of Antichrist. You see that film that they are watching that they showed us that uh, Antichrist, uh, they will be looking for Christians from house to house. That's not how, they, how it will happen. I don't know who lied to them. They will never be able to enter into your house because where the lintel had been pasted, where the blood pasted the, upon the lintel, the angel of destruction couldn't go there. Listen Listen and listen very well. It is the land that you and I will take for God that God will reclaim upon the face of the earth. One tittle, one, one foot, one inch like this. All God needs is one man to put his feet upon that one inch. God will come and use that one inch to reclaim everywhere. All that Abraham did was to take a portion and did the title of that portion. And in time, all of the land of Canaan came back to the Israelites. That's why no matter what they do in Middle East, they cannot take that place. That place is a type and shadow of the story and the tale that will be told of the true Israelites in whom there is no guile, which is you and I. That through us and through the land that we have claimed for God and through the mark of Christ that is upon us, Paul said, let no man 
don't trouble me, for I bear upon me the mark of Christ. Don't be foolish like some people that say they will not be listening to Paul anymore. Antichrist is here already. It has taken over the church. You will find a lot of heretic message. You will find a lot of... This is a season where knowledge will increase. There is no way Antichrist will be established or will walk upon the face of death and he will not use the church. See what happened during vaccination. It was even PFN and the people, the people of God that they were using to lock the church. Should church be locked? Oh, quote me anywhere, my friends. Should church be locked? The, the, the beacon of hope, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, should he be locked? A time will come. An Antichrist will be unable to take over the earth. Pharaoh was unable to take over the entire force of, of, of authority in Egypt because Goshen happened through one man, Moses. And at 80, all he did was to turn and look and look upon a mountain called Sinai, <laughs> a bush that was born in but was not born. Excuse me. Was the bush a what or a who? Was the bush a what or a who? A bush cannot be talking. It was not a what. It was a who. Because when God saw that he had gotten the attention of one man, can God get your attention today, my, my friends? After 80 years of your life, can God still get your attention? And when God saw that he turned, he said, let me come. Oh yeah, are you turning this night? Are you turning this night? Are you turning this night? He said, let me turn. And when Moses saw, God bless you, woman, he marveled at the sight as he drew near to observe. The voice of the Lord came to him saying, ah, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Are you turning tonight? I am turning. I don't know about you. I am turning. From wherever I am, I am turning. No matter how long I've gone, I am turning. No matter how long I've backslided, I am turning. No matter how long I have frustrated, I am turning. No matter how long confusion has taken over me, I am turning. No matter how long I have been overwhelmed and frustrated and angry with the times I called on God and it didn't come to my aid. Do you know how many times Moses would have called on God? You showed me this thing. Come, show up, show up. Do you know how many times the children of Israel has called on God? It doesn't matter how long you have called and it doesn't show up. Say to him today, I am turning. As soon as Moses turned, God saw it was time for me to use this man now. It's time for me to use this man. What you did not know was that Moses had to jump. Hey, either he was um, by his own permutation or calculation, the sin of Amorite was still not yet full. Don't you understand? He's a master crafter. He's crafting, he's looking at the sin of Amorite and he's looking at the readiness of the children of Israel. And he's parting the two together and working together. Do you understand? It always does his work like that. Remember when the children of uh, Egypt were running after the children of Israel? He he became a chariot. He became a pillar in between the two of them. He was looking from where the children of Israel was. He was looking into the camp of Egypt and he became darkness to them. And he became light to the children of Israel. And he will, he will, he will, he will turn the wheel of the children of Israel. He was the spanner in their works. Do you understand what I'm saying now? He has the capacity to do that. He is the multi-breasted one. He's the one that will create light and darkness and both will do the same work. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's the one that will create light and darkness. Darkness stands for confusion, but he will be in light and he will make that light unapproachable and he will be in that light and you will not even see him again. Ah! Don't you any cockory with me? The one that is in light. Yes, no eyes. Can see. Ah, my body, my spirit is burning. 
It's time for Exodus. Oh, say to yourself, my Exodus is here. It is time for Exodus. It is time for the redemptive work of God to commence. It is time, it is time, it is time that what the Lord has done, he will relieve it. God is the only one that will do something and will sit down to watch the movie again. Oh my God. Do you know how many times God has watched and watched? It's just his pleasure. Eli Manata. It is his pleasure. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Do you know how many times he played the redemption story over and again? He played it to, to Abraham. Abraham did it. Jesus said, your father Abraham saw to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Where do you think he saw it? He saw it on that mountain Moriah. And by the way, do you know that that was the same place where Jesus died? Aha. Do you know? He played that movie to him. Then he played the movie to Noah. Noah used the ark. Christ was the ark. He played that movie again. Are you listening to me? He played that movie again to Moses. He played the mo mo movie to uh, David. David saw. Uh, why do the Edens rage? And the, the kings pro uh, pro declare, uh, you know, profanity against him. The king of the earth, they gather together against the Lord and his anointed. Do you understand? Uh, uh, by, by, by Psalm 22, David was already saying the words of Jesus. Uh, uh, my Lord, why has that forsaken me? They parted my clothes, they tore my clothes, they, 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 they nailed me. Where did they do that to David? No, David was watching the movie with God. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Oh, yeah. David was watching the movie with God. Do you understand what I'm saying now? And uh, Isaiah said unto us, the child is born. David saw his death. Isaiah saw his birth. Ah, this was the same man that was that was delivered uh, uh, before the foundation of the world. Are you are you are you are you are you are you listening to me? Say to yourself, nothing to me. <laughs> I may be bound. My destiny is not bound. All I need to do today is to say, here I am, send. Oh, I may be in the furnace of fire, nothing do me. <laughs> I may have gone for 40 years, nothing do me. Hey, I may be in the den of lion, nothing do me. For God is ready to use me to establish his redemptive work in my entire bloodline. Here I am. Send. Are you that one that is singing this night? Here I am. <laughs> Send me. As the Lord needs somebody. Oh, my name Here I am. Send me. Ah, Moses will come. Moses will come. Moses will now come back. Jakpada. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Jakpa Apunda. After 40 years, Jakpada is happening. No matter what has been taken away from you. He's coming back. Restoration is coming before Exodus. It's happening. It's happening. In 2019, I said to you, people will go and they will come back. Did I not say that? You listen to me. Everything that is happening now, I had once said it in 2019. That's why I don't have time to prophesy anymore because action has started. Oh, God. You can't be prophesying when action movie has started. You understand what I'm saying? You can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk before the thing happened. But immediately, 2020, I said that was the oh, that was the line. That was the year that the activity started. There was no point to begin to talk it. Anybody that is prophesying, I've told you, the person is, is echo. It's echo. I don't have time for prophecy. It's echo. Now it's action. Actual movie has started. Do you understand? And except you are the boss in a film. Do you understand? Uh -huh. That's when you die. Do you understand? Ah, Kaya. Kaya, I have chosen death. I cannot die. It's too late. The work and the redemption of the redemptive work of God must finish. It must end and it must finish on my head. Do you understand? Generations must be fully delivered into the hand of God through my hand. Therefore, Jabba is coming. No matter what, Jabba must happen before Exodus. Moses came back. No matter what, forty years was happening. He came back and what had never been recorded in the history of Egypt began to happen. Plagues upon plagues. They began to see God. They began to know, even his brothers began to see that he has been truly sent. And then the works started. 
And the day came when the Exodus was full. Every man go into your brother's coffers. The companies that you have worked in Egypt go. All of the commencement, all of the seed that have been planted in the days of Joseph had now come to fruition. Harvest is now here. Go and take. And immediately they got there. The children of Egypt were already waiting by the door with gold for things of gold, silver for things of silver. Question, what did they need all those things for in the wilderness? For 40 years, they didn't need it. Do you understand what I'm saying now? For 40 years, they didn't need it. They didn't need to use it at all. There was no vault in, in, in the wilderness. There was no uh, uh, reserve in the wilderness. There was no importation, clearing, and forwarding in the wilderness. God was the one that supplied everything for them and provided everything that they needed for the 40 years. Their shoe did not did not did not remove. Nothing removed. Everything was 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 intact. Nothing they didn't need anything. What did they need those things for? Can somebody help? me please what they did that is for was to use it to worship god it was a tool of worship it was a misplaced priority that made them to be using all those things to make another god when you are not delivered from yourself everything that god you give you you will use it to strengthen Baal. you will use it to create another god uh, for this moses we do not know what has become of him make us another god do you understand what i'm saying that's why you and i must be delivered from ourselves because when jackpada happens and exodus happens we will be established upon the face of the earth as a as an icon of hope and a true light and salt of the earth. Don't, don't, don't let your heart be, be weary by the things you are seeing. With the light is coming back. The salt of the earth is coming back. And at that point, because we have been delivered from ourselves, we will not use these things to serve Belial and to strengthen the hands of Antichrist. Stand to your feet. God now made Exodus to happen. God then did something to the enemy. The enemy that wanted to depopulate the children of Israel. God now brought them to a place where they themselves would be depopulated. Question, what is the greatest, greatest, greatest blow you can ever do to a nation? The greatest blow you can ever do to a nation is to decimate its defense. Do you notice that that was what God did to the, to the Egyptians? The greatest and the strongest of their men, God made them to be drowned in the Red Sea. That economy never recovered. God took commerce away. He took defense away. In one day, my goodness, it is time for the redistribution imperative to happen. Get ready to compete. Get ready to, to fight. Get ready to take. Get ready to be bold and be of good courage. Don't be a fool. Don't be stupid. Don't be mumu. Don't be led back with all the glory that God has given to you. It's for you to contend endlessly for the faith. Go for that job. Yes, go for that job. Go for the highest order in your line. Don't stay for these things to come. Go and take it. Go. I've never seen laid back, fearful people on the face of death like Christians. Sometimes I feel like puking. Sometimes I ask God, help me so that I don't slap my brothers. So that I don't begin to give them blow. They are so timid. They are so laid back. They are so afraid. They are the ones that get to at the receiving end in business. They are the ones that the world will cheat. They are the ones that, 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 that they will receive the, 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 the end of it. Every time can you rise up and be bold? The world is not expecting righteousness. They don't see righteousness. Don't expect righteousness from sinners. Go there and complete. Find a place where there are corruption. You can turn it around. Find a place in your industry where you can establish it. If Daniel being the head of magician could do it so that he can stand in Babylon and he didn't soil his hand, you and I don't have any excuse. The dark world and the sons of Baal cannot begin to take over everywhere. Go into that field and take everywhere.
You are asked to take, make disciples of every nation. You are not asked to be laid back. Jesus prayed for you and I that we should not be taken from the world, but we should confound the world. The world should be afraid of us, contaminating it, not the other way around. Rise up wherever you are as declaration begins that I and the children the Lord has given to me. We have a signs. We have a wonders upon the face of the earth. Every blood that I have today I regain it. Bloodline regained for God. Bloodline regained for God. Bloodline regained for God. Generation after me. Generation after me will serve God. God will use every generation in my bloodline. He will redeem and restore and redeem and restore and redeem and restore. He will always find a, a man in my generation. He will always find a man he will use. He will always find Moses. He will always find Joseph. He will always find Daniel. He will always use them as the best kept secret in Egypt. They will go in there. And by corporate espionage, they will begin to take over cities, global territories. They will begin to take it one by one. And I declare upon my generation, here we are. Use us. Deliver me from self. Deliver my generation from self-aggrandizement. The declaration has begun. You better join me. Deliver me from self. Deliver me from self-aggrandizement. Deliver me, oh God. Let me see the traitors around me. So that when it's time to jagba and to jagba down and to jagba. Do you understand what I'm saying? Eh? Because that was what happened in Egypt. God used Moses. He jabbed. He jabbed. And he jabbed. All the children of Israel, they went, they came back, and they took right down restoration through me into every bloodline, into every generation to come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I regain them one by one by one by one by one by one. One shall serve the Lord, and it will be counted unto him as a generation in my lineage. God will use my generation are strategic partners forever and ever so that with me he will regain the earth he will regain the earth for righteous will inherit the earth forever is the word of the Lord I stand today to say here I am send are you making the declaration with me are you making the declaration with me? Here I am, oh God. Here I am, oh God. Use my family. Use my generation. Everything that the devil has taken away from my bloodline. Recover them all today. Deliver me from proclivity. Deliver me from self. And so when you bring me into the place of influence and affluence, I will not use those things to establish Antichrist and to strengthen Baal. I will use those things as a tool of worship. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You have five more minutes before I begin to make declaration over you and your generation. You gather every of your children together. If they are not with you, you list their names and raise it up because it's time. It's time for us to take over. Exodus is here for me. Open your mouth and declare. Exo ah, don't say it in your heart. Oh. Don't say it in your heart. Exodus is here. It doesn't matter. I am that redemption. I am that perfection of those that have carried promise. They have been there for 300 years. It doesn't matter. I am here now. They have been there for 350 years. It doesn't matter. I am here now. They have been there for 430 years. It doesn't matter. I am here now. God, Exodus begins with me. Exodus begins with me. Exodus begins with my children. Exodus begins with me. From today, I regain, I recover, I restore, I redeem all upon the face of the earth for Christ and for his anointed in the name. Jesus, are you speaking? Are you speaking? Four more minutes for you. Are you speaking? Exodus is here for me. Exodus is here for my generation. Exodus is here for me. Are you speaking now? Are you speaking now? Are you speaking now? Are you speaking now? Exodus is here for me. Exodus is here. Exodus is here. The same way the children of Israel stood and put the blood on their little. They were speaking for generations to come. They were speaking for generations to come. Till now, they still do Passover. Why not become that foundation for generation to generation to generation? 
want to come and begin to do ritual in the name of your God. My God, my Father, I stand. This is the gift by which I will give to my generation. This is the gift that I present to my generation. And that is you. Take over every seed in my loins. Take over every seed in my generation. Find yourself useful in my home, in my generation, in the name of Jesus. Do Exodus again with me. Relieve Exodus again with me. Relieve Exodus again with my generation. I begin to speak to your bloodline. Everyone, I begin to speak to your bloodline. Whatever has been done, whatever shrine, whatever coven that your family, your generation represents in your dynasty from today, Exodus is here on your account. Exodus is here. Whatever they've done in your presence, in your absence, whatever your father did, whatever your grandfather did, whatever your great-grandfather did, it, don't, it doesn't matter. Today, yesterday, ended last night. I claw back. I redeem. I remit. I restore entirely every bloodline that is there on your account. In the name of Jesus Christ. One more minute before I begin declaration. Oh, don't miss this. Don't miss this at all. Don't miss this at all. This is generational. This is generational. This is generational. It will be impossible for anyone to come through you and not serve God. It will be impossible for anyone in your loins and in your generation to serve the devil. It will be impossible possible for the devil to profit with your entire dynasty. It will be impossible for your generation to come and not be a profit to God. It will be impossible for that bloodline, that curse to run riot in your family. It ends with you in the name of Jesus. You are a new redefinition of standard for your entire generation. In the mighty name of Jesus, I reclaim on your behalf. I remit on your behalf as, the, as God's own servant, as God's own friend upon the face of the earth, as a strategic partner as his own treasurer upon the face of the earth. I stand on your behalf to make a demand on heaven today that Exodus begin in your life today, that God will use you to reclaim your entire dynasty. Listen to this one. The declaration has started. Hell, listen and listen good. Everyone here, none of their dynasty will visit you. Hell, listen and listen and listen good. Everyone here, hearing the sound of my voice today, none of their dynasty will be your candidate. Hell, listen and listen good. I redeem, I redeem everyone in their end race in their entire generation. I stop them from going to hell in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They become exodus. They become gods in the name of Jesus Christ. On my account, I declare, I raise my hand. Redemption will be a complete story in their generation. In the name Jesus. Are you ready now? Exodus is here for you. Exodus is here for your dynasty. Exodus is here for your generation. Exodus is here for your race. Exodus is here for your bloodline. Exodus is here for your for your for, for your for your village. Exodus is here for your dynasty. Exodus is here for your clan. Exodus is here everywhere you represent today in the name of Jesus. Exodus is here. You will take all the resources. You will take all the glory of Egypt. You will take everything for God. You will take it to the wilderness and you will use it to serve God. You will use it to build to God a tabernacle of Moses and you will establish it forever from today in the name of Jesus. You will possess in the wilderness all the land that have been given to you. That was what Moses did. Moses followed them for, for, to 41 stops. The only place Moses didn't follow them into was into the was into Canaan land. He followed them and he started he started giving, giving portion by portion. He established the hand in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to the next generation. Because 
because in Moses was was Joshua. In in, in Moses was Joshua. Jo Moses secured the next generation before he died. I secure the next generation before you see death. I secure the next generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Your children belong to God. Your children, children belong to God. God will use them as an espionage. They will go into the highest places of the earth and they will take over the wealth there. They will become icon. They will become mighty. They will become great. In my lifetime, I will see them. I will hear of them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will strengthen their hands. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God will profit on their account. In the name of Jesus, Exodus is yours. Practical has begun. Now I set the earth into motion as the servant of God and as the recorder of the ancient one begin to deliver into the hands of the sons of God who are true, who have decided to do the will of God. Here, begin to deliver into them the resources that is in your hand. From today, wherever they stand, wherever they tread, you begin to serve them, you begin to give to them the resources that will catapult them into a place where they will be influential and they will declare affluence for God and they will declare God and righteousness everywhere through excellence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The practical has begun. You will not be stranded wherever you are know today that you are an espionage. It has begun. It has begun. It has begun. You are an espionage. Now I give you courage. I declare the courage of God upon you. I declare the spirit of God to take over you. I declare you to be courageous courage that you have never seen before you begin to display now go go like the word of the lord i declare to you go and possess fight the good fight of faith you will not lose any battle nothing will die in your hands all of the men that go to war with you no one will be missing as it was recorded in the dawn of history the life of moses the last battle he fought he, all the men that went with you they were counted and none of them was lost none will be lost in your generation none will be lost in your family in the name of jesus christ of nazareth I have delivered to you the full commandment and the word and the voice of the Lord. I have delivered to you today and nothing will be held against me. My blood, your blood is free. I, I, God will not require your blood in my hand because I have declared, O oh earth, O oh earth, hear the word of the Lord. Begin to do what you are sent for this wants to emerge. And now hear me wherever you are is now in your hand. Go as far as your eyes can see. Go and reclaim those things for God. You don't need to ask. Go, 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 go. Just make sure that greed is not motivating you. Be delivered from greed, my friends. Just make sure that greed is not motivating you. Ask for the highest height. For the deep places of the earth belong to God. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. God will use you to Jagba, to Jagbada, and to Jagba. Everywhere, restoration is here. Declare it on the rooftop. I am Exodus. Exodus has happened. Exodus has begun. None of your seed will serve Baal. None of your seed will enter into confusion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Are you blessed today? Are you blessed already? Are you blessed already? Can God count on you already now? Talk to me. Can God count on you already? Hallelujah. The next stop now for all of us is to go and reclaim womanhood. Go and reclaim womanhood. Call all your friends, male and female. Let them register for that conference. No excuse. God is taking lands gradually. We are following the agenda of God. This is not a ministry. This is not a church. It's a movement. We are one of the few upon the face of the earth that God can count on. And we are following the curricula as God has given to us. And he has taken over you. He has taken over your family. He has taken over your bloodline. The next thing he's taking over now is womanhood. Don't miss that conference for anything. 
April 19, April 20, those two days, lock it down, go online and register now, shoot it everywhere for everyone to see. It is a must for you to be there because God is going to take over wombs. God is going to take over womanhood. God is going to establish his own gold diggers that will come upon the face of the earth and they will dig gold for God. They will become that woman in, in, in Proverbs 31 that will dig gold out of nothing. He won't wait for a man to do something, but he would he will submit himself to the will of God and he will submit himself to his man fully because he knows that God is the only one that watches a movie that has been done over and again. Are you with me? Don't miss it. I will see you there. Either online or offline, I will see you there. Go and register. Don't say because you are, it's for women. No, it's for everyone. 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 We are gonna God is gonna come and speak to us his own standard, not experience. We are not coming here to talk of experience of those that are married for so and so yes, no, that, that nonsense must end in the church. You cannot be using your experience to preach as the standard of God. Oh, the standard of God is coming back. Having this seal, the Lord knows who are his, and let everyone that named the name of the Lord depart from evil. Finally, I raise my hand. And you all are my witness that till I die, if at all I will see death, I will not serve the devil. I will not condone what I had once condemned. If I fall, I will rise. No matter what happens, I am not a candidate of hell. I will not strengthen the hand of the devil and I will not preach heresy. Everything that I speak is from the standard and the mouth of God directly to me. And I submit myself to God and to follow God and to do the will of God. I am not for sale. My voice is not for the devil. My price is fully paid. And nothing will hold me bound to serve the devil. So help me God. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. Till I come your way again, keep being Exodus. Because Exodus has begun. God bless you. Take this message everywhere. Send it to all your loved ones. Take it everywhere. Uh, do real or whatever you want to do with it. Do it. Send it everywhere. It is the sound of heaven. And that is what it is. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.